All right, you guys, so for today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to get the best FPS, the best visibility and reduce your crashes for Call of Duty DMZ. Let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go to Steam, open that up. Then we're going to locate Call of Duty, right click, go to manage, then go to browse local files. Now, if you're using Battle.net, this is going to be different, but ultimately you just need to get to your Call of Duty directory. Once we're in here, we're going to go down to COD EXE. We're going to right click that and go to properties. That's going to open up this window here. Once we're on this window, we're going to go to the compatibility tab. Once we're at the compatibility tab, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to disable full screen optimizations. Now, this is a setting you want turned on unless you use Nvidia overlays. Otherwise, you turn it off. I'm going to have it off because I do use Nvidia overlays, which we'll go over at the very end. Then we're going to go to change high DPI settings and we're going to check override high DPI scaling behavior. Press OK, press apply, then OK. Afterwards, in this window, we're going to go to the top and we're going to highlight this URL and copy it. Then move down here to your search bar and type graphics. Once we have graphics set here, we're going to go to graphics settings. This window is then going to open up for us. Once we're in graphics settings, we're going to click browse. Then we're going to go to the top and we're going to paste what we had just copied. That's going to bring us here where we can select COD EXE and press add. Now I've already added it. So it says specific app was already added, which is down here. We then click that we go to options and we make sure this is set to high performance. Then we press save. Lastly, we're going to talk a little bit about hardware accelerated GPU scheduling here at the top, also known as hags. Now, some people for Call of Duty having hags off gives them better FPS and better performance. And some people having it on gives them better FPS and better performance. For me and for every single other person that I have troubleshot their computer and helped them out with their performance, having this on significantly reduced game crashes. So I advise having it on or experimenting and seeing what works best for you. Afterwards, we can go ahead, close this window, close this window and start up Call of Duty. So once we're in the game, we're going to go to the top right here, go to settings and then go to graphics. Once we're inside of our graphics, we're going to start here on the display tab. Now you'll notice that I have full screen borderless set. That for me is because I have multiple monitors that I'm constantly shifting between all day. So this is what I have to use. If not, you want to use full screen exclusive as that's going to give you more FPS and better performance. Otherwise, everything else within the display tab isn't super important, except for maybe custom frame rate limit. Now, I have mine set to this, but you can feel free to just set this to unlimited and you'll be good to go. Afterwards, we're going to head over to the quality tab. Now, within the quality tab, you want to make sure that your render resolution is set to 100. Then we want to go to upscale and sharpening. Now, this one is super important, you guys. A lot of you guys are going to have this set to NVIDIA DLSS. NVIDIA image scaling or maybe AMD FSR 1.0. Now, while that's super good for low end machines that struggle to run the game, if you're looking for the best visibility possible, you're going to need to scroll down in here and go to Fidelity FX Cast. Once you have Fidelity FX Cast set, make sure you crank this bar up all the way to 100. That's going to give you the best visibility in the game. With that, we're also going to combine it with anti aliasing set to Filmic SMA 2TX. Okay or T2X, apologies. Then we're gonna set anti-aliasing quality to normal. With those two combination of things, that's gonna give us phenomenal visibility with good FPS. Afterwards, we're gonna to go to video memory scale. By default, this is set to 80. And for most people, 80 is perfect. Some creators are gonna tell you to set this to the max or to the bottom, but in my personal experience in testing, that just makes the game run horrible. So it's best to leave it on the default, or if you do thorough testing like I have, I'm setting mine to 70 as that's what works best for me. Afterwards, we're going to go to texture resolution. We're going to set that to low. Now, when comparing low to normal and high, the visibility differences don't even exist. When comparing it to very low, on the other hand, very low really drops your graphics down um, and makes things really hard to see. So I'd set that to low. Afterwards, we're going to set texture and filter anisotropic to low, nearby level of detail to low, distant level of detail to low, clutter draw distance to short, particle quality to low, particle quality level to very low bullet impacts and sprays. I have this on because I do recoil testing within the range, but if you don't do that and you just want the best FPS possible, feel free to turn it off, even though it's not going to make much of a difference regardless. Afterwards, persistent damage layers, set that to off shader quality to low testization to near and terrain memory. You're going to notice that it's blank here. Whether I said to min max, there's some kind of bug that just blanks it out every time. So I wouldn't worry about it until they fix it. When they do fix it, I need to do experimenting and see what's best. 
Afterwards, we get to on-demand texture streaming. Now with on-demand texture streaming on, I actually noticed I got better FPS, but at the cost of crashing more often or having things like stutters. So I advise strongly keeping that off. Then we go to streaming quality, set that to low, volumetric quality to low, deferred physics quality to off, water caustics to off, shadow map resolution to very low, screen pace shadows to off, spot shadow quality to low, spot cache to low. Now, some creators are gonna tell you to set this to high. For me, high doesn't equal better performance, but maybe for you it will. So feel free to test between high and low and see what works best for you. Particle lighting to low, ambient occlusion off, screen space reflections to off, static reflection quality to low, weather grid volumes to off, and then NVIDIA low reflex low latency. Now, some people wanna have this to off, on, or on post boost. Know that the higher you turn this up, the less FPS you'll get, but the better input delay you will have. If that's important to you, feel free to turn that on. It's not important to me, so I turn it off. Then for the last few settings, off, 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 and zero for our film grain. Then we're gonna head over to the view tab, make sure you hit apply. Once you're in the view tab, we're gonna talk about view to view. This is a really important one for you guys. So the higher you crank this number up, the less FPS you're gonna get, but the wider field of view you're gonna get visibility wise, which is also going to decrease your gun's visual recoil, making it easier to fire fully automatic weapons and stay on target. My advice is to stay within 90 to 110. Most professional lever level FPS players are going to stay within that range. Going any lower harms them, going any higher also harms them. So that's my advice, but play around and see what's best for you guys. Afterwards, we're gonna go with ADS field of view, set that to affected, weapon field of view, set that to narrow. That just applies to that visual recoil that's gonna help you stay on target. Third person, we don't care about. Vehicle field of view, we don't care about. First person camera movement and third person camera movement, make sure to go and set these to least 50%. We want as little camera shake as possible. We don't need that, that does not help us. As for the last two settings, they're irrelevant. Now, the last thing I'm going to touch on is NVIDIA filters, like I had said. So if you hold Alt on your computer and press Z, this menu is going to pop up. This only works if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. If you do not, this will not work. Then you head over to game filter. Now, you guys are going to notice that my game is really colorful. If I turn this off, you'll see the color difference immediately. Now, the reason I've set this up is because it allows for me to see significantly better at range. So as you see, I have it set here, but if we're gonna start from the beginning, let's go ahead and we'll just click three. Three has nothing set. We're gonna add filter. We're gonna go to color. We're gonna open that dropdown. We're gonna set tint to zero. Tint's normally gonna be like right here and right here. You're gonna set it to zero, set this to zero, keep temperature at zero and crank vibrance from what starts at zero all the way up to 100%. This is going to drastically help you spot targets at a distance, you guys. Now, obviously console players are not going to have this, right? So if you do not have this on console, Make sure to go onto your TV, go to the display settings and see if you have something called vibrance, saturation or color and crank that up and see if you can get that same desired effect. Anyways, you guys know what the drill is. Like, comment, subscribe. Helps the algorithm. Helps me. I appreciate you guys. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.